What's up, alumni? Welcome back with us. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, as you can see, uh, I'm still here with Mackenzie Dyer, and she still refuses to join me on the couch. Uh, last time we spoke, I was talking to Mackenzie uh, about the first lines of the Serenity Prayer and, and how powerful that, that has been and, and the, the, how useful of a tool that is and in my recovery and in this journey I have to, to stay sober and, and, and continuously work on becoming a, a better man and a better me. Um, so Mackenzie, last time we, we were talking, uh, I just finished up talking about the, the, the first line of the serenity prayer and, and God and identifying that, that for me where I started, uh, God was, was simply good orderly direction, the, the, the next right step. And then to define grant, uh, the requesting a favor or a privilege and talking about how I knew a, a privilege really, I'd, I'd had plenty of privilege, uh, but that favor really meant something. And I was telling you a story about my friend who looked out for my boy that I'm forever indebted to. But then we talked about serenity and, and that state of being calm, peaceful and quiet. Uh, but we really identified, that, I told you the story of how my life had become chaos. And, and, and that was the, the prevalent uh, mood, the, the prevalent environment of, of where I lived, not just my life, but in my head. And, and, and how I'd, I'd taken a sander to, to cover up that double identity uh, to try to re remove those, those marks that, that my addiction was creating. But the next line is, is where you, you really put in action because it's, it's not just enough in, in sobriety to just know. It, we can give you the answer all day. We can tell you exactly what the solution is. But if your feet don't move, then you're not going to get anywhere. Uh, I tell guys that all the time with any prayer. It's not just about, we're not so special that we can ask God for, for this, this wonderful thing. God, grant me, allow me the favor of, of this serenity, this calm, this peace and quiet. And we're not so special. He's just like, oh, cool. That's what you need. There, there you go, Brett. Take that. It doesn't work that way. What God gives us the ability to do is take action. And in the next line, it says, to accept the things we cannot change. So I had to define accept. And it, it says to endure a situation or take blame for something. So I said, okay, this must, this must really mean something if I'm asking this, this, this good order of direction to, to take blame for something and to endure a situation. Let me see how this works. And so I looked at it and I said, well, take blame for it. It was my fault. I, I could say that the addiction created the track marks. I could say that my father questioning me created the scenario where I was in this jam. But, but realistically, it was, it was me. I, I was the one that, that, that went through this addiction. Yes, it's disease, but I was the one that was choosing to do these things that was creating this scenario with my father. I was the one that had caused these track marks who decided to use a needle to use drugs. But to endure it was something I hadn't thought of. I always wanted to blame. I always wanted to use somebody else, some other scenario. It's not my fault. I'm just sick. But I had to... I had to accept that this absolutely did happen and there's nothing I can ever do to change it. You know, page 63 of the big book tells us we will not regret the past nor wish to shut the door on it. That's important because if I do forget, if I don't endure the situation, if I try not to remember it, then the next time I may think this time will be different, this time will be fun, but I can always roll up my sleeve and I can realize that when, when I use drugs, I take power tools and sand the flesh from my arm. That's my best thinking in my addiction. I need some calm, some peace, and some quiet so I can find another solution. The very next line says, the courage to change the things that we can. To me, that's where the serenity prayer tells you to take action. Because now I looked up courage and it's, it's simply the act of being brave. I, I know this alumni, I know if you're fighting this fight, if you've gone to Bradford Health Services, if you, if you walked away from your, your family and you sent time up there to work on you to be a better you for them, that took courage. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing right now and, and, and you're going to your meetings, whatever that looks like, you're, you're involved in your fellowship, you're involved in your spiritual life, that takes courage. Even if you haven't been and you're struggling right now, and things aren't where you want to be, and you have been to Bradford before, but you are in the grips of despair, if you're watching this video, that takes courage because you're still seeking something greater than you. So the courage was there. Now, what did it look like to change the things that I can? Well, that's everything that I was being taught. That was waking up in the morning and saying prayers. That was doing my meditation that was going to meetings, that was being of service to others. Those were the things they were teaching me. That was constantly putting at the forefront of my thought, doing the next right thing. 
Here was the tricky part in the beginning, though, is not knowing the wisdom to know the difference. And that's the final line. And I looked up the wisdom and it said, it's the ability to discern what is true, what is right, what is lasting. And that I had an inability to do. So I had to think in my life, who did have the ability to tell me what was true, what was right, what was lasting? And that was, that was staff. That was my sponsor. That was the group of drunks, the group of addicts. That was those people that God had put in my life to help me through this journey. So as I began to have new problems, because sobriety didn't eliminate the problems. Sobriety didn't just come in and say, oh, Brett, you're sober. It's all rainbows and bunny rabbits for you, buddy. No, life still happens, and y'all know life still happens. But it takes having the wisdom to know what is true, what is the right path to help us get through these problems. And we can't get through those problems unless we have the serenity. So I started utilizing those people. The, the second time I came back to, to, to Bradford, I listened to the staff. I, I no longer fault them. I said, absolutely. I, I don't know how to lead my life. I'm, I'm not a good son. I'm not a good father. I'm not a good husband. I'm not a good brother. It didn't matter. I'm not a good neighbor. I, I'm not a good employee. I need help. Get, get me on path. And so when I started to rely on others for the wisdom, that helped me find my immediate solutions. I'll tell you this, today, and, and God will, in nine, nine years and seven, six days, God has granted me some of that wisdom today too. Now I get to be that father that has the wisdom, that brother that has the wisdom. But I also never forget the serenity prayer. And when I am stuck and, and I do feel overwhelmed, I still go back and do what it tells me to. I ask for that favor of, of peace and quiet. I accept the scenario I'm in. Yes, this is a stressful situation. Yes, things seem overwhelming. But if I can endure this, I can use the courage that I've got from, from the very beginnings of, of, of Bradford taking me into this process, from all the wonderful people taking me in this process, and, and, and I can move forward. Maybe now is a good time, if I don't have the wisdom, to use those old tools and find the wisdom in others. So it's very important to me, alumni, and it's been a blessing in my life, and I don't share it to tell you that it'll be the biggest blessing in your life. I share it to tell you it's an opportunity. And if you're reaching for an opportunity today, or you're looking for another tool to utilize on a day-to-day -day basis to continue in, in, in your march, and your, in your effort to stay sober and be a better you, try the serenity prayer. It has literally been one of the biggest tools in saving my life and, and bringing my family back together. And, and man, my, my, my family today, when, when I first got the treatment, was a, was a wife that I thought I was getting a divorce with. It was four days after my son's first birthday. And, and today I'm still married to that same wife. We've got three kids. Uh, she is realistically my best friend, which I never thought was possible. And it starts with utilizing the tools that we've been taught. So, so my, my, my hope for you is that, that you'll try that serenity prayer. And when you feel like that, that little molehill is a mountain and it's too much to overcome and this addiction is, is too big of a grind, try the serenity prayer and think about those definitions and how it applies to you. And, and thank you, Mackenzie, for allowing me to come here today and, and share my experience. And uh, love you, alumni. I'm alumni. And I can't wait to see you at the next function. Until then, stay sober and, and keep God first. Thank you so much.